Good afternoon. I would like to welcome those who are in the church this afternoon and those who will be watching our interview on our YouTube channel, now or later. My name is Lorna and I'm a member of the church team here. Uh, and this last year has seen huge changes in the way we work as a society and as a church. Our city has been silent during the first complete lockdown. And later there were quiet weeks when the shops and the restaurants and theatres were all still very closed. There's been little scope for exhibitions and similar initiatives. But now we're getting back to a different way once again. In this time of return, some of the things we once took for granted, I'm going to be talking to some people who are looking forward toward new things and new hope during this year. I'm very pleased to be able to welcome our guest today, Claire Wood, who is, um, well, her title is Norwich City of Sanctuary Coordinator, but she is a part of the team and part of the Schools of Sanctuary team too. So thank you for being here today. Perhaps you could start by telling us a little about um, what brought you to be a part of that team. Okay, so um, it was probably about four years ago and um, there was the incident of the small boy that was washed up on a beach, I think it was in Lampedusa, and um, that was enough to, to make me think. Um, what could I do? Because it's, it's such a massive, massive issue at the time. We had the war in Syria, and you had migrants crossing the Mediterranean. And um, it, I think a lot of people feel like I do, in that that's like a, an issue on such a scale, there's nothing I can do here. So a little bit, a bit, a bit like with the environment and climate change, where you go, well, will it make any difference if I put some recycling in the bin? You know how does that matter? It's a similar sort of thing. I realize that if you do something on a local level, you are doing your bit, and that can then have a ripple effect, and it, it can affect change. So I found out about uh, Norwich City of Sanctuary, and uh, at the time I was volunteering with one of the local uh, charities, New Roots, um, who work a lot with, in supporting migrants and refugees and asylum seekers in Norwich. And um, they were looking for someone to take on the sort of admin side of it. And four years ago, it was relatively new and they were just getting it off the ground. And they'd been running for a little while before I joined them. Um, and it was three local people who, um, from, those, from that sector who decided to set up Norwich City Sanctuary and uh, got it off the ground. And so I just joined in an administrative role to start with, and then I've been part of it ever, ever since. Mm, that's lovely. That's a lovely idea that the way that you started sounds really, really important, wasn't it, to you? Yeah. Um, I think that you talked to me a little about one intention of the work, is that the refugees and the asylum seekers, while they're sort of waiting to find out what's going to happen to them, can live in dignity, with dignity. And so I wanted to ask you, um, you know, they're waiting to see if they safely can stay. So what sort of things are we doing or do you do to, to help in that? What sort of things can help them? Um, well, I suppose what it comes down to is just seeing them as newcomers to our city. And um, they arrive here for all sorts of different reasons. And Norwich doesn't have... Um, a large proportion of refugees and asylum seekers, if you compare us to somewhere like Sheffield or Birmingham or any, you know, any of the big cities. But we do have people that come here who need our support. And I think that what we're trying to do is counter the negative press narrative that does exist, um, which is all, it's very hostile. It talks about immigrants immigrants and immigration and all of these words are quite weighted um, and what's happened over time is there's been this sort of drip 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 effect of headline after headline which is anti-immigration you know they're taking our jobs they're you know all this kind of narrative and 
a lot of it is just simply not true. It's, it's um, a case that they, to be an asylum seeker, and everyone in the world has an entitlement to be an asylum seeker under the UN Convention on Human Rights. So if, for example, Norwich was bombed and we were in a wartime situation, we might need to flee to somewhere to be safe. So we might have to go to Belgium or wherever. And under that law, under that sort of uh, right, we would have the right to go to Belgium and say, can we seek asylum here? Can we stay here just for as long as we need to until uh, we can return home? So that's what they, that's all they're doing. So for example, we have Syrians here. They're, you know, obviously we've seen the pictures of the war in Syria. The Syrians are here because they need somewhere safe to stay. And when and if they can go home, they will go home. It's just a, pla a place of sanctuary. So that's what we mean by refuge and sanctuary. And so our work really is just educating people about what these terms mean. So what is an asylum seeker? What is a refugee? And they are difficult, complex mm. issues. Um, but fundamentally, a refugee is somebody who's fled um, their home because of war, persecution, or a, a natural disaster. So there's been a flood, or there's been an earthquake. And when you break it in, down into that, most people, if they realize that, will go, yeah, it's fine, very happy to welcome them to our city. Uh, it's, you know, it's not gonna be forever. Sometimes it is, because they make their home here, but sometimes, I mean, ideally, they want to go home. They don't want to be refugees. They don't, I, I work with a, a refugee, and uh, no, she's an asylum seeker, and she told me nobody chooses to be a refugee. It's, they are forced to be uh, refugees. They, you know, they're forced to leave their home. They don't want to, they'd rather stay there. And so the negative press is always um, uh, focused on immigration and immigrants. So, and that's a whole different topic in itself because as a people in this world, we have always migrated. Everyone migrates. My brother lives in Germany. People in the UK travel to Australia. We don't bat an eyelid at people going there to improve their economic whatever their prospects, or they just fancy going to work in Australia. So we have people, but there are other migrants who come here because they think, well, oh, the UK seems to have an economy that's working well, they want to come and work here. So you have Italians, you have uh, Portuguese, you have all sorts of migrants who come. And again, there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with us. We've always done that as a race. We've always moved to wherever you can be, yeah. you can benefit economically. So there's. There's a lot in there, but there's no reason why we should have anything against any of the people that come and work here. And the other main thing that we try and uh, educate people on is the contribution that they make, that the refugees particularly, if you look at some of the stories of what they've gone through, first of all, to get here, sometimes horrific journeys to get here, and then once they are allowed to stay here, they want to give back, so they contribute a massive amount and you, I can give you like really good examples of you know people who've just gone. We're so grateful that you let us come. What what can we now do? And they will do things to try and integrate and sort of educate. But there's this negative sort of hostile uh, approach that still exists. So that's what we're trying to counter. Really. Oh, good. <laughs> Thanks. It's very really worthwhile. So one of the things, uh, for instance, is we're about to host. Art on the Railings here at Peter Mancroft. I'm really looking forward to it. So perhaps t t tell us a bit about what is Art on the Railings. Okay. It's going to happen next week. That's right. So uh, it's really nice to advertise it here and it's going to happen here next week. Okay, so from Friday, there's a, a, a team of us who've been working on these events for Refugee Week. So Refugee Week here in Norwich starts on Friday and goes straight through till the following Sunday. Uh, and obviously, um, what we've got outside is um, art that's been contributed by, by artists, but also anyone who wanted to have a go. So it's poster art. It's not art that we expected people to spend three days painting, although some people have. But really, it was just sort of what, if you think of the, um, the hashtag that we're working under is together with refugees, if you think of refugees, if you think of words like sanctuary, refuge, home, hope, migration, words like that, what does that make, what does that inspire you to draw? So 
we, they've, we've had some really beautiful examples sent to us. Um, and they've all now been mounted onto boards and they'll be on display outside the forum all next week. And then uh, we've also had a lot of, um, one particular school sent us a lot of work, um, Worcester Primary, um, who um, they just put, put the same question to the children and they've done some beautiful artwork all on, based on that, those sorts of um, messages. So yeah, that's, that's happening from next week. So. Come yeah, look. really looking forward to that actually. And also the day of welcome. Okay, on the 11th. so yes, yeah. so this is where schools of sanctuary come in. So Norwich City of Sanctuary is organised into streams. So we have a school stream, we have a university stream, we have a um, theatre stream, art stream, faith, and so on. So there's a, a there are more. Um, and the schools one is particularly well established, and uh, this year has really taken off because we've got a small team who've been able to get some funding to, to work on it. So my colleague, Jake Rose Brown, who's a teacher at Avenue Junior School, came up with the idea about four years ago, I believe, to um, establish a day of welcome, which is on the Friday before Refugee Week. And it's an opportunity for schools to sort of dip their toe into the whole sort of slightly complex issues of uh, displacement, migration, those sorts of things. And so what we offer are um, lesson plans and assemblies that are written by trained teachers. And we, uh, you know, schools are basically given the opportunity to do as little or as much on it as they want. And they can do it on that day, they can do it over, uh, some of them do it over a whole week. Some of them then go and look at what resources are available via Refugee Week. Some of them do, um, you know, lovely fundraising projects. Some of them do, there's all sorts of, different schools do different things and depending on the age group as well. So next week on, no, sorry, this Friday, um, we have uh, at the current count, I think we're up to about 125 schools who are taking part. That's a lot. And this is the first time we've, so it's always been Norfolk, but this year for the first time we've got some in Essex and Cambridgeshire. Wow. And we've got nursery schools right up to colleges, so the whole um, spectrum. And obviously the, the resources are tailored for the age group, so some of the more weighty issues are done by the high school students. Um, so it's a real opportunity for them to just sort of uh, look at some of the issues. And a lot of the um, what we do feeds into the curriculum, so it covers P PSHE, um, uh, it can go into the art, into literature. We've got lessons that focus on how you uh, might get it into the maths curriculum. I'm working on currently for the science curriculum. So there's all sorts of ways in which you can look at um, the issues, but also look at, I suppose what I'm trying to say is, um, so if you take the science curriculum, um, we're looking at uh, how the children are learning science but the backdrop of it is refugees. So it's not always just sort of looking at the poetry that a refugee wrote or something like that. It's looking at, okay, in this refugee camp in, in Jordan, they're growing plants in this way. Can we replicate that here? That's, do you see what I mean? Yeah, so it absolutely. becomes more of a, you know, just another topic. It's not just about refugees. It, it just becomes the norm that, yeah. okay, we're going to look at this particular aspect of... From that perspective, really. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so, that sounds brilliant, actually. Yeah. I, I've kept you talking long enough, really. <laughs> but um, and just to say, uh, myself, this together with refugees is another thing. And I've heard, I think even my photograph's going to be on the castle. Yes. <laughs> yes. So there's lots of photographs on the castle That's in right. big hearts. That's so right. So people should look out. And um, I know that I've just got a few moments left. So I, I do want to ask you this one question. How has this pandemic changed your, your perspective of life? Has it? Uh, I think there's an, an awful lot of good that has come out of it. I think the world has slowed down and we've all been able to think a little bit more. And in terms of Norwich City of Sanctuary, there's a lot of people who want to join us because they've looked at their uh, outlook and kind of gone, yeah, that's what I'd like to do. I'm going to go and join them. So That's lovely, isn't it, really? There's real good in that. So before we finish, I've got a, a prayer. Well... A prayer which was written by Pope Francis, and it is for refugees and asylum seekers. So we'll just quietly 
be in the presence of God and say this prayer. In caring for refugees and asylum seekers, may we seek a world where none are forced to leave their home and where all can live in freedom, dignity and peace. Merciful God and Father of all, wake us from the slumber of indifference. Open our eyes to their suffering and free us from the insensitivity born of worldly comfort. Inspire us as nations, as city communities and individuals, to see that those who come to our shores are our brothers and sisters. May we share with them the blessings we have received and recognize that together, as one human family, we are all migrants journeying in hope throughout our lives. Amen. Claire, thank you so much. My pleasure.